Hello everybody, Tahoe Yak Fisher here. I'm going to do a final product walk around of my summer project, which is a Wilderness Systems Ride 115 that I have converted into an electric kayak. Now at the heart of this conversion is a Minn Kota uh, Endura C2 30 pound thrust. I want this thing to troll on Lake Tahoe, so power isn't a priority. Actually, battery longevity was my primary concern, and I think I've done a pretty good job with that, but we're going to start here with the motor. So I wanted to use the Wilderness Systems factory steering options. The, the boat came with uh, the tubing required to put cable in for a factory rudder system and I did in fact use the the factory rudder pedals um, and uh, the factory cable channels now um, this is a upgrade that I have made from the original cable I had in here um, this is Hobie rope and if you are familiar with the Hobie stuff they use this rope for their steering and their rudder and um, the rudder hoist, um, all kinds of good stuff. So uh, I used that, and um, I've actually had the opportunity to install uh, one of the Torquedo systems, and I had the bright idea to just use Torquedo steering triangle rather than drill any holes in the, in the mast here like some of the other conversions do. So here we have a uh, Torquedo steering triangle that I shimmed up with a a piece of scrap plastic that I had. It's actually like a, a POP card that uh, came with a product off the shelf. Who knows what it was from. Anyway, there you go. Torquedo steering triangle. Now, um, I had a, f a friend of mine make, a fabricator friend of mine, build this false transom, kind of similar to what Bass Yaks and some other manufacturers do, uh, as well as a lot of people on here that have built their own. But here is... Uh, the one that I came up with, it is aluminum. We've got um, T-nuts I actually got from a ski shop. These are like from a ski boot. And I very uh, carefully fished them into the hull of the kayak. And they bite in from the backside and allow you to put a bolt in from the top. Um, we have a Minn Kota plug, uh, which is like a twist lock plug so that it can't come out. Um... Now, I was able to maintain the Minn Kota C-clamp, but I removed the pivot hardware that locks it in place, and we're going to see why here in a minute. You know, the, the steering cables hold the motor down, if you will, and then here we get to my hoist system. Now, anybody that wants to use a Minn Kota and is trying to come up with different kind of bracket ideas... This is a Yakima bar clamp, and it attaches perfectly to the, the shaft of this Minn Kota motor. And the only thing that bar clamp is doing is holding this loop of utility cord. I have a uh, carabiner attachment here because I want this to come off so that I can remove the motor. So this apparatus stays with the kayak. The motor goes inside. And what I've done is I've triangulated the pull. So this hoist rope just goes down to this um, pad eye and there's a knot right there. It comes up, it goes through this pulley. It comes down, it goes through this pulley. It comes back and we end up at this Harkin block uh, har uh, cam cleat assembly. Now if you can imagine when we pull that, uh, let's see if we can get it all in there. We lock the motor up and it is out of the water. Now because of the steering cables, I couldn't allow it to go up all of the way. So I used one of the holes provided by Minn Kota and I put a bolt with a piece of vinyl tubing over it to make a soft stop for the motor at the length that the steering cables could handle. But as you can see, the motor is well out of the water, out of the way. I beach launched it yesterday, and it was actually a steep beach, and the motor didn't touch anything but water. All right, let's go back up to our Harkin Block uh, cam cleat here, and then you give it a slight up tug, 
drop it right back down. Now that is kind of the same method that Torquedo uses in their 403 ultralight. The big thing I did was to um, use this pulley to double. You know, going down here and, and, and doubling the pull reduces the amount of effort it requires to lift this heavier than a Torquedo motor out of the water, but we have got it. It is literally effortless. It comes right out of the water. That's one finger. We can go right back up. So yeah, sitting down, no problem. Motor's out of the water, out of the way. That was the last thing I really needed to do to, to finish this in a way that was more or less uh, indistinguishable from kind of a factory install. I wanted this to have zero problems. Okay, now we're going to go around the other side of the boat here and, and keep looking at kind of the stuff that I did. Now we are going to go inside here. We have the uh, throttle box that switches the uh, that makes the motor 100% variable. That's the control box. And those two red leads there, that's a 30 amp circuit breaker. So this is completely wired inside the hull. That goes back to the motor and goes forward to the battery. Now, um, this particular product is made by Wireless Trolling Pro, and I'm gonna show you guys the remote and give you a little demonstration here in a moment. But it also has a kill switch, so if you fall out of the kayak, it doesn't troll right on away from you. Now we're gonna go forward and look at my batteries here real quick. We've got two 35 amp hour absorbed glass mat uh, mobility scooter batteries, so you know, these are only about eight inches wide, five inches deep, and I don't know, seven inches tall. So we've got two of them in there wired in parallel. So these are 35 amp hour. When you wire them in parallel, that gives me a total of 70 amp hour. We've got a frame made out of PVC and pool noodle. Now, the um, it's self-locating. You can see down there at the very bottom of the picture here, uh, right there, that uh, beam that goes down the center locates that uh, tray side to side, and the kayak itself locates it fore and aft, so these batteries cannot go anywhere. All right, I left the remote control inside, so I'm going to pause it for a second and come back and show you how all this stuff goes together. All right, hang on. Okay, you guys, I'm back. Now, actually, I wanted to show you a couple more things before we get to the remote. So here we have our Hobie uh, rope coming up and operating our pedal, uh, our pedal-operated rudder steer. So as you can see, we have nice amount of range. The um, I actually was able to use this steering triangle and the way that it interfaces with this Minn Kota uh, bracket to create its own steering stop so that in no situation am I yanking on the cables, you know? So um, everything is reasonably passive, even when we've got it centered and we want to hoist the motor, um, in, even in that situation, we have excess, uh, Hobie cable. So I've got, kind of got everything at a length and here we've hit our stop. So it's not going up any farther, you know, so I've kind of got everything so that it has its own limit stops. As a matter of fact, I also wanted to show off the routing of that hoist cable, which touches nothing so there's no added friction okay you guys now you know so we're getting started on how it's going to be set up to fish you know kind of the final thing I actually have to figure out is the fish finder you know my fish finder that I have 
will mount very nicely to these rails, but they really don't provide any w nice sanitary way to wire it with the foot pedals there. And I don't want wires poking into the top of the gunnel. So I think I'm actually going to put the fish finder right here in the middle. And um, I will troll off of this side. Or if I'm lake fishing, I'll put a rod holder on this side for when I land a fish. All right, so moving on. Here's our remote control. I tried to figure out a nice place to mount this, but this seat actually has a little pouch right here, right in front of me. And the cool stuff about this remote control is once you have your throttle set, which is right there, um, all you need is the kill switch right here. Run or idle forward or reverse now to turn this thing on there's a switch on the side and we are going to turn it on right there i've got it set to 40 percent power which is uh that sweet spot that was 1.6 miles an hour i tested it yesterday for four hours straight we're on idle we're going to flick this to run bam we're running now check this out flick it to reverse bam we're going in reverse it's got a soft slow a soft stop and a soft start there we're going forward again we hook a fish flick the button it cuts the motor without changing our speed you wrangle the fish you're ready to go on it goes bam all right you guys that's the end of it. Please tell me what you think. I think it came out really awesome. If you have any questions about how I did anything, please ask. And if you have any comments, please leave them. All right. Thanks very much for watching. Tight lines. Yak Fisher out.